Hi there. So in my previous video, I tried to launch Apache Jack Rabbit Oak in a standalone program. So we saw that how we use different backend implementation that was segment that was based on segment node, node store or document MK and RDBMK. So this time, uh, but the thing is, most of the time, if uh, you are making use of Apache Jackrabbit, Oak, or uh, you know these repositories, uh, you might have seen it's OSGI. That's that matters a lot. So in this video, we will try to launch the uh, OSGI with an O. Uh, uh, sorry, we will try to launch uh, Apache Jackrabbit Oak with an OSGI framework. So let's quickly go through what we're gonna do. Is uh, uh, this is uh, this is a test class. Uh, so my uh, my launcher that uh, in which uh, I would actually launch the OSGI framework. Uh, it, it's gonna be based on this particular test class. So and this is actually based on one of the integration tests that uh, that is available on the uh, Oak framework. So what am I gonna do is I'll just uh, I'll launch a framework with a few properties like boot delegation that would be needed for a few of the packages framework property that's the HTTP port I will we will see the web console uh, so that's uh, it would be available on this is for testing I have different value for it actual when I'm uh, launching the framework so repository home would be provided and then server at API jetty SCR that is needed config admin is needed file install is very important because file is installed would actually install the configurations and based uh, on that uh, particular PIDs and configurations the repository would be launched when the bundles are being started specifically the oak bundle and these are the dependencies that uh, we need to have when we are going to launch oak in OSGI so let's go ahead uh, i have actually built the project you just have to do is run as and install uh, this is the jar i have just copied it already and i'm gonna put it here to test it so the configuration directory would be the name uh, would be named config and here we're gonna have to provide the configurations i have few configurations at my end uh, that i have already prepared so segment mk there would be three configuration pids that would be needed to launch the repository the first one is repository manager the other one is uh, segment node store service.cfg and the if you want the uh, you know data store uh, you can specify different type of uh, uh, whatever you want file data store we would be using and with the configuration so this is actually uh, specified in the oak repository configuration documentation if you know so this particular part is the one that is what we are working on so there are different parameters that you can specify but we are actually just looking at very basic uh, properties so uh, let me show you what are they and let's go open that let's open one of them so this is what I am going to specify uh, for segment node store service. It's just a name repository home where I want the repository to be launched. And uh, yes, I'm going to use custom blob store. Uh, if I data store, would, I'm just specifying the path. It would be data store within the oak home directory. Cache size and minimum record length. We have several properties that we can configure. And this one is just an empty configuration that I got from the um, integration task itself. So this is just the configuration is needed PID to to launch that. No properties are there. All right. So let's go ahead and try to launch it. I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna install my sorry start Java jar. So let's see, it's a 
launching the framework and installing few bundles in it. So this is a folder that's been created. I see that Felix root is basically the bundle cache locks is where the locks are going. And Oak Home is basically there. It's being launched now. The segment node is store as we saw previously. And the indexes and blob IDs, this is I think specific to because we have now indexes. Lucene indexes uh, and other bundles as well. It wasn't the case previously when we were launching the standalone repository. So yeah, can I go back here? So let's try to see in the uh, in the console because we have a Nibbles app console. So I'm going to go to the host. It's triple eight zero. So is an impassable is an admin. So these are the bundles that have been installed in our framework, and we see that uh, all of them are installed. They are in active state. You can see the configuration as well. So the configuration we provided three configuration files. So let's see what are they. So this one is initialized on the basis of that the, the repository is launched so home directory is this um, other values we that we haven't specified they are taking uh, you know they take default values so yeah the next one we have is repository manager that, that's just a file nothing else and just the pid is needed and file data store that we provided the data store directory within the old form so all only the repository would only be initialized when we have these configuration files available in config directory. All right, so yeah, that was segment MK segment based. So tar MK that's what we got it. Let's go ahead and try to test with the other configurations that we have. So. Let's leave this home right tool. And I'm gonna delete these configurations as well. So this time I'm not gonna use, we, we will use the uh, Mongo MK. I'm gonna put the Mongo configurations here. File data store document node. So let's quickly the file data store is same repository manager same the we need to look at is document node store configuration. It's local host and the repository home would be the directory where it would just uh, indexes and everything. Data store would be gap. The name of the database of Oak and OSGI, nothing else. So for that, uh, as I did previously, I must have uh, Oak and OSGI running on my system so it's already there let's go ahead and quickly launch it same configuration exactly i'm gonna go for just straight again okay when the size started i'm gonna go back to the and so refresh it and i see again 44 bundles are active um, if I go to configuration this time, I should see the document node store service that is just on this based on the, the values that we provided. And few values are kept as default. Just make sure that look here. So the document store type is Mongo here and not the RDB. It could be RDB as well, and we will see in the next. Step will when we test for RDB. So that's it. Let's have a quick look at the token. Oh, it, it was an empty database. Uh, you can believe me. So I'm going to refresh it. Uh, so this particular, let's see what collections do we have here. So all the, the documents and collections, they, they are created here. So we can see the, we'll see the customs. So this is the key. This is the only one node, node ID is one, and yeah, we are default value, so yeah, so, so.
so it, it, it's working fine so we can see we can have a log so you know look at the logs as well so i have redirected this this out and all the streams to my framework log and uh, we should be able to see that in there then, i think so yeah we see that um because i have uh you know enable the log label to debug so the background side and all the logging because then it's continuously logs are moving so yeah we can have a look and if you want details you can definitely go through the logs as well all right so let's test another one that's the last one that's uh a db okay let's stop it and this time we will test with the uh, rdbmk so the case with rdbmk is a bit different because what we need uh, is a data source and for data source let's quickly delete it first then we'll talk about that i'm gonna delete the configurations here so uh, when it's going to be based on RDBMK, any any relational database system, uh, it might be MySQL, it might be Oracle, uh, SQL Server. I, I will be using MySQL. So it would need a data source. And to provide data source, what, what we need is uh, uh, it's uh, how it is implemented data sources. It's provided as a service, OSGI service. Uh, and that it is uh, javaworks.xql.data source that service actually so different uh, providers are available for that what i have used at my end is the from sling so that provides the the data source pool uh, connection pool so it could it actually register a service factory and this is the configuration for one of the instance so let's quickly have a look at this so the data source name would be Oka, and that would be used. That's the default one that is used. Driver class is MySQL driver. It's the Oka OSGI again. The database that I have, oh, Oka OSGI, you can see it's empty database that I just created a few months back. And the root and password, that's the default password that I have. So, and what we do here is, uh, as I mentioned, it would be the same document node store service, but only change that we have is document store type is RDB this time. It's not more. Other things are exactly the same. I'm gonna close it. And yes, I have copied the configurations already and I have deleted the existing directories. I'm gonna launch it again. My framework blocks are empty. Let's start again. Look at the train of blocks. Starting the bundles and yeah, and it starts the repository now. Or if you error at the deeper level. Okay, I think we are good now. Now we should see that the GFP looks nice. So we are again I get that the config manager. So the document node stores are still the same. The So the MongoDB name is uh, Mongo uh, Okinawa okay, no, yeah, This time the store type we have is RDB. Uh, all the things go in the same. The other thing that we can notice is the uh, Apache Sling connection core data source that we are making use of. It's Oak and making use of our MySQL database. You can configure so many properties related to you know, data source. You can have a look at that. The repository manager and file data store, the things remain the same. So I think the repository has launched already and yeah, it's making use of the database. You see the tables we have. Can I refresh all and the tables are created. Customers channel settings. So yeah. 